even the uh, some of them have goals and aspirations and they try to do something, but as soon as they hit some kind of setbacks, they quit. Mm -hmm. So what makes you different? How come you didn't quit? Oh gosh, um, how come I didn't quit? Uh, it just wasn't an option. I think uh, when failure is an option or giving up is an option, I think people you know fail, they give up like 99% of the time. Um, but from I guess it's when I was small, you know, growing up from you know, hearing people say you can't do it or you're too small to do this, too slow to do this, and I guess you kind of hone in and, okay, I'm going to use that as my focus to prove them people wrong, mm -hmm. and I can, you know, pretty much just focus on just continue to go forward, and even though at times you are going to be too small or too slow or too whatever, where it looks like you're not going to be able to succeed, I think you have to, that's the moment that defines you, you know, those smaller moments define, like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do it even though the whole world is saying I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, it's just something coming within. I think people either they have it in them, um, you know, they have that mechanism in them to give up or, or not. It's hard to just have a switch and say I can use it at any time. I think you're kind of you know you're born with it and you're gonna always have it or you always or you're never gonna have it. Mm -hmm. And did you know like when you start when you became an athlete, did you know you will be successful or you kind of went flow? Um, I always knew I was going to be successful, even though I might not be an athlete. Uh, my, I guess my, uh, my childhood hero was Michael Jordan, and it's like I remember somebody made a statement that he would be Michael Jordan, even though, or even if he wasn't Michael Jordan. And that kind of made it doesn't matter what I'm going to do; I'm going to be successful at it. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to be, you know, no disrespect, but to, if I'm going to be a janitor, I'm going to be the best janitor ever in the world. You know, that's going to be my focus on being the best. So um, become a professional athlete, of course, that's just going to carry over to, oh, now he's part of the best, and now he has to focus more. Not really. My focus is the same. My drive is the same. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of uh, been the approach. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. What's your drive? You told us you're in the middle of the mountain and you're climbing on yeah, top. Yeah, yeah. So what, what drives you every morning? <sighs> I just... I don't know. I don't think it's something tangible. I, I think it's I'm obsessed with being successful or I'm obsessed with the journey to mm -hmm. be successful. I think that's the only definition. Like I said, I, it's not something you can like, okay, it's on paper, so this is what it means today. I think it's just something you wake up and like, I got to hit the ground running today. Mm -hmm. And you feel like that every day. And like I said, for, for me, it's hard to give up, you know pretty much than do anything else in this world. So I I don't think it's something tangible I can put my finger on like why. It's just, I'm just obsessed with it. It's, what a, it's is, a disease. What is success <laughs> to you? You always have to say success, obsessed, obsessed about success. <laughs> obsessed about, what's success to me? Uh-huh. Uh, there, there's no, there's no end goal. Because um, I don't think it's a, an amount of money. Um, I don't think it's, if you're an athlete, I don't think it's an amount of wins, championships. I, I, you know, I think it's Tiger Woods, if he, you know, breaks the record and wins 20, um, you know, tournaments, I, I still don't think he's going to like, okay, I always win at 21. You know, yeah. Michael Jordan has six championships. I guarantee you sit and talk to Mike, he won seven. You know, Jay-Z can have as many hit records as he wants. He's still going to want one more. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think, when you have that drive, I don't think it's ever complete. I don't think it's ever over. And Jerry Rice made a statement. He's like, he's never played a perfect game. But if you ask the, you know, the fans, mm -hmm. or, you know, the average person, that they're like, well, he had a game where he had 11 catches and three touchdowns, and they won the Super Bowl. That's a perfect game. Well, to him, it's not perfect. It'll never be perfect. Um, and I think that's what you continue to strive for. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, some kind of ritual to do every day to keep you fit and healthy mentally and that makes you even more successful? Um, Besides kale. <laughs> <laughs> kale has definitely helped. Um, again, it's, it's more of a, um, a mental thing. It's more of a waking up and just knowing that you have to achieve some goals. I have this thing, like, oh, I guess I do. I have a thing that I call... Um, I, I say I have to win every day. You know, if I win every day, or if I win four or five days of the week, mm -hmm. I think I had a good week successfully. Mm -hmm. 
on the on the field, I guess it's easier because it's a physical thing. It's a physical battle, mm -hmm. and like if I beat this person, you know, I won that play. If I, you know, we won this series, I won that. Play, I won the series. Um, in business, it's kind of harder. It's like but I correlate it to getting on the call. You guys are pitching something, or they're pitching something. You guys, you want to win the conversation. Yeah. You want to win, you know, the person to invest his time, effort, energy mm -hmm. in you. That's a win. Yeah. Um, if they, you know, well, thank you, Mr. Hatchet, but we're not interested. That's a loss, you know. And I try to wake up and like I gotta win something today. One of these phone calls, uh -huh. I gotta win. If I have five phone calls, I gotta win three out of the two, you know. And that's just kind of been my focus on how I can kind of correlate the physical aspect of sport and bring it to the business world. Perfect. That's that would be my next question. When they tell you thank you, but no thank you, many mm -hmm. people give up after. Two or three no's. Mm -hmm. What makes you keep going and get the yeah. yes? They're, they're, yeah, they're, it's not an option to give up. It's just not an option. A no is not an option. Failure is not an option. I mean, it, I, I mean, I hear it. You know, I'll take it in, but you gotta go mm -hmm. on to the next. I mean, if you sit there, it's like people. A lot of people always talk about the athletes and how they go through depression. Like after you know they get done playing, they're mm -hmm. depressed, and this person's depressed. And I'm like, well, if you have, you know, your wife and your mom and three doctors and the NFL doctors and they're all telling you, you're depressed. And all of a sudden you're gonna be like, you know what, I'm depressed. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're depressed. Maybe what if those people were saying, you know, well just, you know, go put your focus on this or if you never let that word come out your mouth, I don't think that you'll give in to that. Uh -huh. It's kinda of like the whole no thing. If you never give in to it, I don't think you you're ever defeated. I think mm -hmm. you're always like, okay, I, I hear it, I'm gonna take it in, but now I gotta figure out a way to win. Mm -hmm. I gotta, you know, come back this way or do it this way, different, whatever it may be. Um, and then you kind of figure that out. What's that gonna be? Nobody knows until it happens. But for the most point, part it's, I just don't, I don't even hear it. I don't even take it into consideration. Uh, did you have, do you have like any regrets if you go ten years back? Would you do anything different? Ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, half of, half of me says yes, and then the other half is like, well, I'm fine. I'm where I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm good where I'm at right now uh -huh. in my life. I, I love my life right now. Um, and I remember the, uh, in 2001, I was a free agent, and I visited the Miami Dolphins and visited, I think, the Chiefs. No, the team. Then I went to the New York Jets. And my next visit after the New York Jets was the New England Patriots. So I end up signing with the New York Jets. New England Patriots go on and win three of the next five Super Bowls over the next five mm -hmm. years. And I'm like, what if I would have signed with the New England Patriots? But does that mean my career would have ended with an injury? Does that mean I'd be paralyzed today? Does that mean I would have been in Boston, maybe got hit by a car? So does that was that the right path or the wrong? You don't know. You yeah. know, so I my life, you know, message has to be if you made the decision and you're not dead or in jail, you've made the right decision. Yeah. Because the other path, you don't know the outcome of it. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I, I don't regret anything. It's like, I guess you can only like learn from it. You know, but there's certain instances where it's like, well, what if, you don't know, you don't know how that uh -huh. would have ended. Like I said, I could have went on and made NFL MVP and then went to celebrate in the Virgin Islands and drown. So, you know, who knows? So that's, <laughs> then I wouldn't be here today. I'm glad you are here today. <laughs> and I'm glad to be here today. Uh, what's, well. your, what's your biggest aspirations for the next three or five years? What do you top of the mountain? Uh, just, I, and if it, it's like the top of the mountain is like the gold at the end of the rainbow. Yeah. It's, it's there, but it's not, it's not tangible. I don't think it's the amount of money. I don't think yeah. it's the amount of wins. I, it's just, it's something that something comes from within, like, I made it, or you know, it's like you can, re you know, even people that retire at 65 or they retire at 35. Some players yeah. now retire at 30. Yeah. Does that mean they've made it, or does that mean they're trying to move on, or that mean you know they've reached the top of the mountain? Mm -hmm. It's whatever that thing is inside of you that says, I did. <laughs> you know, whatever well, that thing is. Brian said he wants his jet, and he was saying, I would, I would love a jet. I would definitely love a jet. Um, and. To me, the top of the mountain, the jets, um, you know, is there. It would take you there faster. It would take, I don't well, it won't take you there faster. It would take you there more, in a more luxurious way. Yes. 
But I don't think that'd be it. Cause, cause don't forget, cause his aspirations are the same as really a lot of athletes, entertainers, mm-hmm. non-average people. Mm-hmm. The kind of conversation we're having. Once we get the jet, we're gonna want more. You know, of look course. Like, we want more. We want more. That okay. commercial is well, like so. Exactly. So the, it's not now. We don't want two jets. We don't want three jets. But that jet signifies yeah. that we got a lot going on, and we want more going on. That's what I'm trying to like to get out of you because it's, it's like, not tangible. Like uh, astronauts, they prepare all their lives to mm-hmm. go to space, and when they come back, they're like, "Oh, that's it," yeah. and they become depressed and drug yeah. addicts. Yeah. yeah. So people need something that drives them every day to to want something more. I think I think if you put if you have a specific one goal in mind, you're going to be disappointed mm-hmm. because you'll get there. Let's say you get there. What do you do after that day? Yeah. And so your life is over now that you made it. Uh, so there's very few people that have the mentality of. I, I, I put like um, Kobe and the Jordans and the Puffies mm-hmm. and J- Okay, so if you're at a dinner table, like, to put it in a physical thing, yeah. if you're at a dinner table, right? And you sit down and eat and you get full. You don't want to eat no more, yeah. right? But if you're Kobe and you're Jordan, you keep eating. If you're that, you just keep eating. And you keep eating. You don't get full. Oh, really? You don't, <laughs> you don't get full. Uh, to put it in a physical thing, okay. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like... I'm just gonna eat, eat, eat. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna get forever. I I don't get. I'm go. Ah, 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 ah. Especially if it's kale, you know. And if it's kale, ah, 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 you know. <laughs> but I, I so it's like yeah, it's not the it's not the one thing because okay, I want to get drafted. Mm-hmm. I get drafted. Okay, I want to play and I want to do this. Okay. Once you do all that, like then where do you Let's go? Let's try to come from a different angle. What mm-hmm. legacy do you want to leave? Legacy? Yeah. <sighs> mm. That ha- like he did it the right way. I think that's the biggest thing. I think um, there's a lot of misperceptions. And I think I've always had them. So I remember when I was maybe two months away from graduating high school. Uh-huh. Um, I of course at the time I'm still going to the NFL. You know I'm I'm going to play pro ball one day. But you know the average uh-huh. 16, 17 year old doesn't understand that. And I remember going around the class and everybody's saying um, where they're going to college. And everybody's standing up, I'm going, you know, Kent State, Ohio State, and blah, blah, blah. And um, I was like, I'm still undecided. I haven't, you know, made up my mind. Mm-hmm. And I remember a girl behind me said, and she said it just like this, <laughs> like you're going to school. And I was like, of course, you know, but the perception I've laid out to my classmates is I'm a class clown and I'm not going to college and I was just a great high school football player. Mm-hmm. And so at that moment, I'm like, I'm going to school. I don't know where. I don't know how I'm going to get. I had nothing, you know, to prove to her. That's why I just sat my butt down because I didn't have the answer at the time. Uh-huh. But from that moment, I'm like, I'm just maybe it's perceived that this is who I am, but really I'm not. I'm really a more determined, more focused person. And what you see on the outside is just, like I said, having fun, like the clown around, which is great, but nobody's going to have that drive and determination inside like me. And I think it's been kind of that way looking back now throughout my whole life. You know, well, you know, Hatch takes things lightly and it's all fun and games. I'm like, yeah, that's fine and dandy until it's time to do work, until it's time to get down. Yeah. Um, and that's, but I remember that clear yesterday, and I'm like, that's kind of been the perception, and I aim to prove her wrong, you know, to this day. I said, oh, yeah, I went to college, and then I, you know, I made my goals from there. So. What's your biggest passion? My biggest passion in life? Yeah. I think my biggest passion in life is to make sure, like, my... <laughs> What's up? <laughs> and to, to punch B. Russ in the face just one time. I just went like, BEAM! He was like, and I wanted to like the beg for mercy. I'm like, no, I punch him again. BEAM! If we get an opera, I will have to edit this. Oh, yeah, hands down. Um, biggest part, I think, is probably to like to leave my kids and grandkids like with a career. 
Like have something built, like this is what they're going to do as soon as they get out of high school and college and they're going straight into what Matthew Hatchett built for them 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Nice. And um, if you summarize in one minute how people first steps to become successful in any area of Outwork life. anybody and everybody. If you outwork everybody, and it's like people take faith. This is the thing when people do this. Okay, I'm going to, hey, honey, we're going to save up and we're going to um, take a vacation to the Cayman Islands. Mm -hmm. That's 95% of, of what people think. Yes. I think, why not work my butt off so I can buy the island? That's, that's, the, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. It doesn't make sense to save up and, you know, spend five days on the island. It makes sense to work my butt off so I can buy the whole island. That's, that's my... Uh, I love it. Yeah. That's what I suggest. Great. Work your butt off. And you, know, you can have anything in this world you want. Anything. Perfect. And uh, Matthew is single and he's on Match.com. No! And cut! <laughs> that is a cut, people! <laughs> and he has, he's gonna have his own island. Mm -hmm. And Brian will fly him there in his chat. So yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. Catch. And soon, if he's gonna be my pilot, <laughs> be Russ gonna be my pilot. I'm gonna be in the back. I'm gonna punch him in the face if he gets it wrong. <laughs> Thank you. No, thank you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you very you. much. I don't promise I will edit everything for overall. <laughs>